Thank you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Last week, we talked a little bit about pronunciation, the schwa sound. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about a grammar point, a very important one. It's called the passive voice. Okay? When I talk about grammar points, I like to talk about them in two um, aspects, form and function. Take a look here. The form is the verb to be and a past participle. Some teachers call it the third form of the verb because you see them in this column, on the third column of your irregular verb uh, sheets, for example, that we all try to memorize. Drink, drank, drunk. Swim, swam, swam. Eat, ate, eaten. Well, it's drunk, swam, and eaten, for example, from that third column, the past participle of the verb. So that's the form. The verb to be can be in any verb tense, okay, as you'll see later. And then we have the past participle. The function of this verb tense, well, there are two. One is when we understand that the subject is too obvious or unnecessary. And the other function is when we want to give emphasis to the object of the verb, okay? Now, here are some examples for the first function. When the subject is too obvious or unnecessary, okay? Let's see. Uh -huh. People eat McDonald's hamburgers all over the world. People cultivate coffee in Oaxaca. People make Nissan cars in Japan. People celebrate the Day of the Dead throughout Mexico. Well, in all of these cases, people, 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 people's too obvious. It's unnecessary. We don't need to use it. We don't need to say it. Of course, people. Who else cultivates uh, coffee in Oaxaca? Um, my puppy doesn't, right? Um, who else celebrates the Day of the Dead in, in Mexico? Um, my cat, Mr. K, does not. It's people. It's very obvious. So this would be the preferred way to say each example. McDonald's hamburgers are eaten all over the world. People cultivate coffee in Oaxaca. Of course they do. Coffee is cultivated in Oaxaca. Nissan cars are made in Japan. And the Day of the Dead is celebrated all throughout Mexico. Okay? Those are examples of the passive voice when the subject is too obvious or unnecessary. Now take a look at these examples, okay? These are the passive voice, but now you're going to see the verb to be is in the past tense, okay? And in these cases, but there's not a correct way to say it. It just depends on whether or not you want to give emphasis to the subject or the ob object. So I'm going to show an image, and I'm going to say the active and then the passive uh, version of these sentences. Listen carefully. Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote Cien Años de Soledad. 
Cien Años de Soledad was written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. A shark bit a girl. A girl was bitten by a shark. An earthquake destroyed the house. Um, the house was destroyed by an earthquake. Michael Jackson sang Beat It. Beat It was sung by Michael Jackson. Arch West invented Doritos. Doritos were invented by Arch West, okay? Now, remember, in this case, either example is okay, passive or active. This depends on what you want to emphasize, the subject or the object of the verb, okay? Now, remember also, the verb to be can be in any uh, verb tense. Take a look at this chart and you'll see all of the different verb tenses um, in the passive voice. Mostly, uh, the ones we talked about today are the most common, using the verb to be in the present or the past simple. Okay? And now, for your homework. Oh. I've attached to the Google Classroom assignment, a very short article about the Day of the Dead in Mexico, okay? So here's the objective. Read the article, identify all of the cases of the passive voice, okay? And then write some examples of your own about how Tol Santos, or Dia de Muertos, or the Day of the Dead, how it is celebrated in your family, okay? Thank you very much, everybody. I hope you have a good day, and if you have any questions about this or any of the activities, please send me a message.